<laughs> Hi, I'm Tomas. And I'm Jenny, and our two kids, Milan and Talea, and our dog, Oliver. And we're starting the Cat and the Mermaid to share with you guys us making our dream a reality. <laughs> and hopefully, maybe in the process, we can inspire somebody else to start going after their dream. Where we left off in our last video is we took our time exploring around the Exuma Islands and then we headed over to Torchtown to pick up my dad on a surprise visit. You notice the screws after we would have been waiting. And our heart top is coming up. Hello! <laughs> Did you pop up? Did he come to see you? <laughs> we made it to I Georgetown. Can, can you say, hip hip hooray! <laughs> pop up's here! Pop up's here! <laughs> the pop checkers? Aww, somebody's happy to see pop Georgetown marked a milestone for me on this journey as most people headed south uh, typically either hunker down in Georgetown or they turn around and head back towards North America during hurricane season. So uh, making it there was kind of a milestone as we were continuing on south. From Georgetown to Mayawana, the last of the Bahamian Islands, it's about a 200 mile journey. We provisioned while we were in Georgetown and then we uh, had a short couple day visit with my dad and then dropped him off on Long Island. Yeah. Whoa, look at that plate. What'd you make, baby? Make some rice and gandules. <laughs> Arroz con gandules. Mm. Not gandules. <laughs> <laughs> So, Tomas, what happened today? You were on a mission. What happened? So, today I went to get some fuel. Uh, some fuel for me. And it's an uh, election today. So, everything's closed. It's just tomatoes. So, by beer, to clarify, his fuel for him. <laughs> yeah. So I meet a couple guys, they're local, and um, they take me to the... To the Barefoot bar. because his sandal broke while he was oh, walking, yeah. right? <laughs> so what happened? So they take me to the, to the bar where they have a friend and he sold me a beer. So, and the bar was closed, right? Yeah. And how much was the beer that you bought from the bar that was closed that you had to call the owner and negotiate with the owner over the phone, right? Yeah. It was in a $90 a case of beer. So I paid $70 a case of beer. <laughs> For the Bohemian beer. For the Bohemian beer. And then what else? And then they took you to go get what? Listen, mommy. I'm starving. That was a lot for Tomas. <laughs> so they also took him. He needed to get some lures because he lost all his lures fishing. So these guys, I guess he was riding around in the back of their pickup trucks, island style. And um, they took him to a little store. And he got his lures, and then he was gonna, he had the gas the tanks bank. and the dinghy. Oh yeah, they took you to the bank to get cash, right? Because you needed cash to buy all this stuff. And, uh, and then they took him over to, what, to go get fuel. He had it all in the dinghy, he was gonna pull up in the dinghy dock, and they were like, no, 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 we'll take you, come on. And they drove him in their trucks, and they were super cool. So we just wanted to give a shout out to people on Long Island. Right? And uh, what is this one? What is this bay? I forget what it's called. Thompson Bay? So, yes. Very nice people on Long Island. We like it. We don't like the $70 beer, but the Bohemian beer is good. Buen provecho.
What are you doing? You eating some melon? Say, are you eating the skin? What are you doing, you silly girl? Fish on two times, and both times, oh one time they broke the lure, our brand new lure. We got some following seas for about 10 miles, and then we're going to turn into the wind. <laughs> calm day today though. There's not very much wind. But we're trying to roll out. Get south. The color of this water is just gorgeous. We have a fish on for the third time <laughs> today. This one. Oh no! Barracuda? Yeah. Boo! Again. Now we gotta get them up here and get them loose. Another fish on! This is the fourth one today, right? Yeah, the fourth or fifth. One jacked our lore. Right, the first one. Two foot barracuda. Right. This is another barracuda.
be the mother of the barracuda. <laughs> Confessions, Thomas. What's the worst part about living aboard the catamaran? Having my sister alone. And I'm on board. I would say, whenever we hit a place where there are no seams and mosquitoes, that sucks. That's, <laughs> that's the worst part. That is the worst part. For you. When you want to go out on the deck and you're like, oh, let's look at the sunset. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then you have to hose yourself down with some smelly shit. This is so fun. <laughs> and you, Tamam? I got nothing to say. <laughs> What's the worst part of living aboard? What about yourself? For me? Hands down, without a lie, the smell of the heads. <laughs> Every time I go in the bathroom, or I open up the cabinet where the tubes are that run to the holding tank. You wanna die. <laughs> that shit stank. I don't care, I put like, I have cleaned it with Clorox. I pump stuff down there every time I pump the toilet. I put vinegar. I have baking soda in the bathroom. <laughs> I have like air fresheners. Hands down to me, like, there is a stench in Marine Heads. It doesn't go away. And the tanks are empty. The tanks can be empty, and there's still a poo poo smell in the wall. <laughs> and I don't know how you fix that. That to me is like. I think, yeah. So I just went to the head and I <laughs> smelled it. You needed to do a confessional about it. Yes. <laughs> to me, that's the worst part of living aboard. Like the moving, the like confined spaces, that doesn't bother me. The heat sometimes gets to me because oh, yeah. even though it's super windy in the front of the boat, it just doesn't funnel air that well through the boat. So it gets hot, it gets really hot. Like when we're on anchor, you walk to the, to, to the bow of the boat and there's like this breeze, amazing breeze, and you come inside the boat and it is like the like greenhouse effect going on and it's hot. And if you're in personality that gets cranky when you're hot, oh, like, like <laughs> <laughs> That's not cute to be around. <laughs> So what about you, Tomas? What's the worst part? Oh, the worst part for me is like dealing with maggots. Oh, <laughs> oh the trash! <laughs> the trash flies! Fly That's Island fucking, stowaways! <laughs> That's crazy. Dealing with maggots, that's the worst thing for You've me. ever had to deal with them. Yeah. I never seen something life. like that <laughs> in my life. And thank God like, for Tomas, because neither did we. <laughs> I never see so many flies in my life and so many maggots. Oh god. That was fucking disgusting. So that's yeah. that's the worst. That's we had to put our the worst. Even dealing with like clogged toilets. Video. You're Nobody the one who fixes that video. those. Huh? You're the one who fixes like clogged toilets and all that stuff. That uh, doesn't compare to maggots. Oh no no, I'm a plumber and uh, I've been dealing with 
crazy thing, but you never saw anything like I this in your whole life. Saw something like that. We killed the flies, though. We didn't see the maggots. Okay, so we, we had to saw... store the trash because it was <laughs> it was five dollars to deposit trash on some of these islands. So we, five dollars a bag. A five dollars a bag of trash. So we decided we're gonna cart that trash to the next island where we could just sneaky lunge that right into a trash can, which we did. And then we did not know the ramifications of going by Fly Island. <laughs> <laughs> where we just open the hatches and Jenny goes, holy shit, are they keeping dead bodies up on the beach here? Because there is some flies coming in this boat. We were the only boat. And we're like, maybe that's why we're the only boat on this beautiful beach. is because it's Fly Island. <laughs> we weren't even anchored for two minutes. And there was like 20 flies. Swarming. Swarming inside the boat. And then we, we had to store our trash from that island on and we had it in a front hatch and that turned out to be a very bad plan. We should have paid that five dollars to get that <laughs> Especially for Tomas. What was the plan, Tomas? You oh you saw the, the plan flies. Was, uh, I saw I saw like hundreds of uh, hundreds of flies. In the hatch. Flying the next inside, time you went to throw away the, the garbage. Storage. But I saw them in the hatch. The hatch was closed. So I saw them through the through the glass flying inside. I was like, huh. Let me don't let me don't say anybody. I got I got I got pets in a cage. As soon we as soon we we heading we heading to another island. When we're open ocean, I wanna open the hatch and all the flies are gonna be gone with the wind. So guess what? I open the hatch, <laughs> but we're on the way, and just like hundreds and flying. hundreds and hundreds of flies, they <laughs> came out, but they stay in the cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I closed all the sliding doors and buttoned all the hatches to the kitchen area, and then all of a sudden, we're like we're, swarming we're with like, flies back. What, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> The boat was an autopilot, and at some point, the boat changed the course and everything. I don't it was know like what. doing circles because there was flies <laughs> the all over me. And, and yeah, I was doing circles. The boat. Tomas is looking back at me on out. the bow. He's on the bow. Has no idea that we're getting infested by flies in the. <laughs> but that was gross. It was. It was so that was that's, it. That's, that's the. That's the. That's, that's the catamaran nice, confession. That's a nice story. The catamaran confession. Yeah. Having said all of that, or the plus side you is you're YouTube, like I'm gonna show yeah! you. the best <laughs> part is that you wake up in the morning and you can jump off the back of your boat and you are at a beautiful beach. And in some of the beaches that we've been to, a lot of them, you can put it's your snorkel us. gear on. You're the only ones there. And you can go swim on a coral reef right off the back of your boat in this like turquoise, this swimming beautiful pool. swimming pool of water. It's gorgeous. Like the most beautiful beaches you ever have seen in your entire life or could imagine for yourself are right outside your door. Crooked Island. Not a super protected uh, harbor for anchoring, but this is all they got, and this is uh, pretty far south. There's reefs all around. So it's kind of tricky getting in. 
and this is Little Bow Basin. I had never seen an entrance like this before to, I guess, what they would consider their little uh, marina. It has a little intricate um, entrance that gets a little rough. Once you get into these rocks, uh, surrounded by a reef, then you have this nice little protected harbor to pull in your dinghy or um, small boats. We got in there and started uh, checking out the island. These South Islands are really small. They have uh, a, a few hundred people, if that, that live on the island. And the people, once you find the people, they're really nice. <laughs> now we're gonna walk into town and see what's up. Right now? We're gonna go see what's up. There was a lot of destruction from an obvious hurricane and also a lot of um, construction going on, rebuilding on the island. This is like ghost town right now. Hmm. Hmm. Are you sure we're not going to die? We eat them. Cereza? What's over there? What are those orange things on there? Papayas. Oh yeah, let's go get us some papayas. Today is Sunday though, so we think everything's closed and we're trying to find people. Trying to find a Wi-Fi cafe <laughs> and a restaurant with cold beer. <laughs> Where are the people at? <laughs> salad. I feel a like cock salad uh -huh. coming on in my future. Oh. So we found the restaurant on Crooked Island and we couldn't recommend it enough. Um, the owner, Willie, quickly became our friend and she helped us out um, and took us around the island. We ended up hanging out with her quite a bit. So they don't serve food <laughs> until 7 or 7.30 tonight and it's like 4 o'clock. But she said she's going to see if she can find us three cold beers from her family members and also maybe take us to the store because I don't think it's within walking distance. <laughs> so she's very nice. Did Willie give you ice cream? <laughs> huh? Is that good? She's saving our life with you? <laughs> Did you have fun yeah. with Willie? Yeah. What did she give you to eat? Cookies. And what else? Ice cream. How many ice cream? One, two, three, four, five. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you got animal sounds coming out of you like the exorcist. <laughs> we ended up staying for dinner at Willie's restaurant and it was a lot later than we had expected. Uh, Willie took Milan into the kitchen and gave him a ton of sugar to keep him occupied while we were eating. But she sits you down in family style uh, with everybody else in the restaurant. Everybody sits at the same table and the food was delicious. We couldn't recommend it enough but we left a lot later than expected and so it was very dark and tricky getting out of little boat basin and back to our boat. Don't worry, twisty, twisty K entrance. <laughs> little boat basin. We got you. <laughs> oh, now that we got out of twisty, twisty entrance, we just have to go over the reef. <laughs> we go over the reef, through the breakers, to the catamaran. And we got it. Despite the jokes, we were very careful about getting back and we made it back safe and sound. They explained to us that in 2015 on Crooked Island, they had a bad storm where there was huge storm surge and that's how everything was kind of destroyed. So they've been rebuilding for the past two years and um, the restaurant owner, Willie, that we went to yesterday, we met her mom and she said she was in apartment buildings here uh, on the coastline and she is in a wheelchair and um, they had such bad storm surge they had to get on the roof. She's 82 
and they had to get on the roof of the building so I guess her son helped get her up there and then she was up on the roof for like 18 hours waiting to be rescued uh, so but you can we, we, we could see that that was going on before we ever got the story but there's a lot of rebuilding going on on Crooked Island but we love it the people are super nice This used to be where you could get fuel, but I guess it was also destroyed. So now it's a little walk to town. But a friendly construction worker who also sells cases of beer, he uh, lent Tomas the wagon for us to walk to go get the gas tanks filled. But I think we're gonna have to make two trips because they don't all fit. This was our last opportunity to get fuel before leaving the Bahamas and getting all the way to the Turks and Caicos. So this journey of ours is known as the thornless path to windward. We are going against the trade winds. They're directly on our nose, basically since we left Florida. So we've been using a lot of motor um, and motor sailing when possible, but it's also recommended to do night sails uh, because you can take advantage of the trade winds dying down at night. So we just got in, what, two hours ago? To the point of Crooked Island in Atwood, what's it called? Atwood Harbor or something? Atwood Harbor. Something like that. But anyway, we did our first night sail the other night, um, leaving Long Island to Crooked Island, and we couldn't film because we were having malfunctions <laughs> with our camera. So tonight's our official uh, first night sail all night. The other day we left at like 4 in the morning and it was very bumpy and pretty scary because we couldn't uh, see coming out and there was all these breakers everywhere so it was just strictly navigation by GPS um, and it was pretty big swell so it was kind of scary but we made it and we loved Crooked Island and now we are heading over to Mayawana which is the last island of the Bahamas and trying to take like a little break uh, tomorrow and catch this weather window that's only like a two-day weather window and jump over to the Turks and Caicos to Provo so we're gonna see how that works out but we should be timing it about at our slowest speed will get us there in like 10 hours um, to the Turks and Caicos so we should be rolling in sometime around sunrise so we'll see how that goes and we'll f try to film and hopefully not have malfunctions while we're uh, Hopefully gonna have a smooth passage tonight. And that boat over there. We made friends with them. They were at our uh, anchorage last night, the watery hobos. They are also traveling south just to the Dominican Republic. Um, so we are maybe gonna do some buddy boating with them. So we'll see, they might be leaving a little bit behind us and uh, hopefully we will meet up with them again uh, somewhere south. If not in Mayawana, then hopefully in uh, Provo. We didn't have a red light, so you couldn't see anything in the footage from our night sail, um, but it was pretty scary just because when there's no moon, you can't see what's coming to prepare your body and brace yourself. Um, but it was a lot of you know, looking out on the horizon and just making sure nothing was was coming. And we took shifts um, of three hours each until so we made it to Mayawana early the next morning. <laughs> Mayawana doesn't have the most optimal anchoring options. Um, but we anchored along the coast so we could get a little bit of a rest. It was really rocky. We had to actually dive down to get the anchor out. But then we moved the boat once we rested for a little while to um, Abraham's, Abraham's Bay, I think it's called. 
Uh, it's surrounded by a reef, so it's a little intense getting in there, but we anchored in pure sand and there were starfish everywhere. We got some rest before our night sail over to the Turks and Caicos, officially leaving the Bahamas. A long trip, but uh, yeah, we were ready. Next up, we will be sailing down to Provo in the Turks and Caicos and then on over to the Dominican Republic. Um, thank you so much for joining along with us in our adventure, for watching our videos. If you're enjoying these updates, please give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to support our videos, you can do so by clicking on the link and becoming a patron of ours. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, please do so to join along with us and get updates of when our next video comes out. Thanks again so much for watching. Cheers.